What's going on guys? This is Tosker and in this video you are going to learn how to make a vending machine application in WPF. And essentially we're just going to create a layout and simulate using a vending machine. This video particularly will only be covering the XAML, uh, the design of our application. We're not really going to be programming anything yet. If you don't care to learn this part, you will have an option you can skip to the next video. But in the description of this video, you may want to obtain the XAML that we created in order to uh, success successfully follow us in the next video. So with that being said, we're going to start up a new project by going to File, Project. And we're going to create a WPF application. And we'll call it Vending Machine Tutorial. Pretty long winded name, but we'll go with it. Yeah. Here. Gonna have to uh, dock some of this. Shit, net. All right, give me a second. I'm gonna cut the video till I fix this layout. Okay, guys, so I, I organized um, all of that mess there. So now we'll get to uh, what we really want to do. And so here we have our plain application. I'm going to first change the title to Vending Machine. Okay. And what we're first going to do is... Uh, we want to give it a height and a width that is kind of, I, I guess, vending machine shaped. So we'll do a height of 600 and a width of not 550, let's do 500. And let's bring this view to 100%. Okay, that's kind of vending machine shaped, although I want to zoom out just a little more. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to create some column definitions and row definitions for our grid. So we're going to grid that column definitions, column definition, and we're going to create uh, five of these. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Let me make this just a little bigger. Okay, so we got five columns. We're going to want to create some row definitions. Whoops. Grid.row definitions. Row definition. And we're going to want seven rows. So we're going to break this grid up pretty. Uh, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to break it up pretty good. Okay, and. Uh, Forewarning, this is going to be a pretty ugly, very ugly vending machine. So, uh, yeah, brace yourself. But we're going to do uh, a light blue background. Okay. And then next, we're going to want um, some kind of banner at the top of our vending machine. Maybe uh, the vending machine company name or what type of beverages it holds or I don't, I don't know the politics of uh, vending machine companies but we're going to give it a banner so we're going to create a stack panel give it a background of uh, a nice ugly coral and we're going to give it a grid dot column because we want it to go across the top of our machine so we're going to give it a column span of five Yeah, add a little typo there. Okay. All right, that looks pretty cool. Uh, let's do a. Obviously, we want to give it some text. Uh, we're gonna. We'll give it a better style later. So for now, we're, let's just do a text block, and we'll call it. I'll call it at least Tosker's vending. Okay. Now uh, we're going to probably want to give this some sort of style because that doesn't look very uh, 
title-y-ish. So we're going to go to our app.xaml. We're going to use this uh, quite a few times. And we're going to create a new style. We're going to give it a key so we can refer to it in our Windows XAML. And we're going to call it, uh, call it a title block. Its target type is going to be a text block that's what we're going to be using okay so we got our style and we're going to access setter property font size because obviously we want it to be a little bigger and we're going to give it a font size of uh, maybe 26 that might be reasonable okay and if we go back here we can go to style access our static resource and it's not there and that's because stupid me trying to we set the target type to a text block so we need to access the style at the text block there we go I think that looks fairly uh, okay but uh, we're gonna want to give it a bigger font size and we also want it to be centered here so we're going to go back going to try 48 we're going to also do setter property horizontal alignment value center we want it centered as well so now if we go back okay it's a big beautiful title I think I would buy from uh, I think I would buy from this vending machine so next we want uh, a list view which is going to display all the product that we can buy from the machine so we're gonna have to also create a style for this just for warning so we got a list view and we're going to eventually put an item source in there but for now, I'm going to give it a margin of, uh, actually, we can do that in this style. So uh, we'll give it a grid dot row. Uh, it's going to be in row one. I'd say it would be reasonable to maybe give it a column span because we want it to be pretty wide. I think three might be OK. And then we're going to want a grid dot row span because we want it to come down. Okay, one, two, three, four. Four might be reasonable. Let's see. All right, I think that looks. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. But we want to give it a, a style. I'm gonna probably leave it white. But in case we want to change anything later, let's create a. Go to back to our app.xaml going to create a key and this will be called uh, vending list target type will be a list view setter property uh, I'm gonna set its background to white even though it already is just in case I decide I want to change it and then we're also going to say setter property I want to give it a margin I don't want it to be flesh around the uh, window I want a little bit of spacing so we'll get a margin value of let's say five okay we'll go back to our window let's go to uh, style static resource and vending list and uh, for those of you who haven't been frustrated so far, I am purposely uh, going through this quickly. Uh, if you want, I, I'm going to do another tutorial or you can even watch some of my older ones if you uh, need to be more informed about what XAML really is. Um, so if you don't, then you may want to just try and keep up or watch those other videos or just follow along. Okay, so that out of the way we're going to in our list view we're going to have items uh, it's gonna be like a regular soda grape soda orange soda and they're going to be uh, a list of 
containers that each will probably contain a button to purchase that specific item, uh, some text boxes to display the name and the pricing, and then we may do another text block to display uh, an out of stock warning if that happens to be the case. So we're going to have to create a list view item template. We need to do so by accessing uh, within our list view our list view and then access its item template and we'll have opening and closing tags of that we're going to get an error because it actually needs uh, some content which is going to be within a data template so opening closing tag of that and then inside our data template tags is going to be the controls that make up our list view item so we're going to have its parent be a doc panel. So it's essentially going to be represented by a doc panel and within it is where we're going to put other elements to display data to the users. So we'll have a button that I will say it's called purchase. And we're going to also give it a style so again, we're going to go to our app.xaml and we're going to go to, uh, if you're wondering why my mouse is going off the screen, I have some of these styles pre-written, so I don't, uh, yeah, okay, I think you get it. So style, uh, and we're going to call it a X key of vending button. And it will be a target type of, of course, a button. So this is the we're change, we're using this resource to change the style of a button. Okay, and we'll give it a background of white. Whoops, got to first access our setter, then property, background, value, white. I think it's no, it's actually not already white. And then we're going to do another setter property foreground value and we'll say black whoops okay then uh, like we did for our list view we want to set our property margin value of five and then we want it to have some padding so uh, the text inside the button isn't just strictly touching the bounds of it. We want some padding within the control. So we'll give it a padding of a value of five. Okay, and I got a little error here. That little syntactical error. All right, and we'll jump right back to our window. And we're going to give our button this style. So we're going to do curly braces, static resource, and we should see our vending button. Awesome. Okay. So now that we have our vending button, we want it to be docked to the left. So we're going to have, maybe I'll put a little picture up on the screen. We're going to have the button docked left, like I said, with a title, price, and possibly a hidden out of stock message that can eventually be displayed. So, going to do button, going to do doc panel dot doc left. Okay, and then next we're going to want a stack panel, and this is where we're going to display all the. Uh, titles, price, whatever. I've said that about 10 times already. So that's what we're going to do. And this is going to be docked to the right. So we're going to have the button on the left and the text on the right. And we're going to have a text block title here. Okay. And then we're going to have uh, another text block price here. Scroll down a bit, and then we'll have another text block. This one will say if it is out of stock. And for now, we'll have to give it, a, give it a visibility of hidden, and we'll be able to toggle this uh, at some point. 
But again, we want to go back to our app.xaml and we're going to change the content of uh, the, the labels displayed to the customer. So we're going to do style, x key, we're going to call it a customer label. Target type will be a text block. We're going to have a setter uh, property foreground value of black of black. Okay, and we want it to have a slightly bigger size. So property, like we did for our title, we want to go to the font size property and give it a value of 20. All right, and jump right back on over to our window. I'm going to say style, static resource, customer label. And again, we're going to go to our next one, style, static resource, customer label label and this it's going to simply have a foreground of red all right okay so now we have our list view that's going to display uh, all of our sodas in the item collection once we bind it uh, but we want to be able to also insert money so we're going to need some buttons so we're going to create a button and yes we are going to be giving this a style as well but for now we're going to put it in row 5 uh, it's gonna naturally be in column 0 and this will say 0 0.25 okay see so how here we're gonna have 25 then 50 and then 75 cents this and this will be in row five grid dot column one then grid dot column two this will be 50 this will be 75 and now we're going to jump to our app dot xaml and again create a style for this button and we're going to call it X key money button and it'll be a target type of because we're setting a style for a button so it'll be of button and we're going to say setter property background we're going to give it a value of white then a foreground of green you know cuz money is green makes sense right so we got a green and then we got setter and we'll do again cuz I don't like things being touch I don't like things touching so we're going to give it a margin of 5 and then, like we did for our other button, property, we want to give it some padding value of five. Okay, so that looks rad. I'm going to go to our main window and now assign these styles to our buttons. So I'm going to do static resource, money button and I'm just going to copy paste this style into our buttons now we're going to need to create a panel below here that's going to display the inserted change or the change returned if uh, I buy a 50 cent drink but I put in 75 cents so now let's go past our buttons here make sure we're staying within the grid and we're going to create a stack panel 
and it's going to be in grid dot row six grid dot column let's say it's column span because we want it to out be as long as the buttons put it there so now we have that right there in the bottom left corner and now we want to create another stack panel and uh, actually I was gonna do uh, we are gonna have a label for total but I don't really think I don't think we need that I think we just need inserted and then you buy so we're going to say text block and here we don't have to go back to our app.xaml because we got our static resource and we're just going to use our customer label and then this one will say inserted uh, this is where we'll say we inserted money and we'll copy paste and then this one will say change so if we return any money to the customer that'll be displayed there okay so we got all uh, the user stuff out of the way for anybody using the vending machine but we also want some things on the right uh, which theoretic the, 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 theoretically okay wouldn't be displayed to the user this is just going to be something for us to look at if we want to refill the sodas empty the sodas or withdraw the money that uh, or collect the money that has been inserted into the machine so if we're going to display this to me and you or anybody really using it we'll just pretend somebody really hurt not that anybody I don't even know why I'm trying to make this realistic it's a computer application so uh, doc panel we're gonna create a doc panel that's going to hold uh, first we're going to have an inventory so it's gonna display to us how many of what items is left and I don't feel like going back to style so we're just going to give this a margin of five because really that's all we're doing to it then we're going to give it a grid row it's gonna be in row one we're going to put it in column three and we're going to give it a grid dot column span of two then a grid dot row span of three and I lied we're gonna give it a, a background of a a, a blank a blocked almond I guess yeah sure that makes sense all right that's a nice little beautiful inventory thing and in here we're going to have the title so text block uh, da, da, da. I wonder if we could uh, I think the title font or title style we already have is uh, a little rough so we're going to give it a font size of I think 28 and we'll give it a style of customer label and this will be the title so it'll say inventory in then jeez my brain inventory bam okay we're going to give this a horizontal alignment in the center then under this we're going to have our stack panel and now this is going to pretty much display uh, everything we have in inventory but why isn't this my huh. I don't know but we'll give it a doc panel at the top okay guess that was our problem there so now we have this this we're going to make sure we strictly dock to the bottom and now we're going to create a bunch of text blocks <sighs> don't mind me guys I have a bit of a headache right now and yeah all right but I promised myself I'd do this before I go on vacation and I figured if I'm gonna be lazy with anything may as well be lazy with the uh, XAML portion so we're going to give it a style 
static resource customer and these will all be a font size of 16 and we'll say this is uh, regular cola zero so this is how it'll be displayed we're going to create uh, I guess we'll have let's say we'll have four different kinds we'll have or or we'll have regular cola we'll have diet cola orange cola and grape cola okay and then lastly and finally we're going to have a little manager portion that allows us to refill empty and uh, withdraw the payments made to the machine so we're going to have a stack panel grid dot row uh, four grid dot column three grid dot column span of two and grid dot row span of three so similar to uh, what we had at the top and we're going to give this a nice beautiful color of a dark khaki all right and then we're going to have uh, again another title which I'm just going to copy the one we used up here put this down and this will be called manager and then we're going to have our buttons and we're going to create a style for this but first we're going to say a button mm. yeah so we'll say button refill supply button empty supply and we're going to have another button that's going to say with draw payments and we'll jump right over to app.xaml going to say style key manager button target type button setter property we'll give it a background of uh, the value of white going to give it a setter property a foreground value red red seems kind of managery I guess seems crucial and important and we'll say uh, property padding value let's give it a little more padding than our other ones so we got that jump right over to our window again now we got to get to its style static resource manager button okay I don't think that looks too too bad but I do want to give them a padding so let's or not a padding but a margin so we're going to say setter property margin whoops not vastly value of five so if we go back okay so I just ran through this uh, I just wanted to get this portion out of the way and actually this is gonna bother me cuz I'm gonna change it but uh, yeah so we're going to say we're going to just give these each a margin of five I would change it in the app.xaml but I don't want it to do that to uh, our items in our list viewer but I did want to space these out a little bit okay so like I said I just I wanted to run through the XAML portion uh, there will be a link in the description for you to be able to just copy and paste everything we just wrote here in this video uh, to your code if you wanted to skip past this or you just wanted to watch to get an idea of what we we're doing um, because chances are if you're watching this you may be more 
curious about the binding and how we're actually going to implement this rather than design it. But I figured I'd at least put up a video of uh, what we were designing and I, I understand I moved a little quick. Uh, some of you may not, if, you're, if this is new to you, you probably wouldn't have been able to keep up much, but uh, you could have at least watched to see where everything was and how we were doing it. And so with enough of my babbling, in the next video we will be covering uh, creating our models, our view models. Uh, we're not going to really be doing views because we're only going to be using one. So our models and our view models and then binding to uh, properties and uh, setting our item collection and our view and so forth. So uh, hope you enjoyed. Like the video or subscribe. I know this was kind of quick. so. I'll forgive you if you weren't a fan of this video, but I promise the next one's going to be much more patient and slower. Thank you.